Good morning, friends, and welcome back. Before I start today's video, I wanted to mention that YouTube is uh, still trying to work out the problems that they're having. In the meantime, I am trying to ease back onto YouTube and get some videos here, uh, as well as some different videos over on my Patreon channel. And I wanted to ask you what might help because some of you asked me how you could possibly help me if you share my videos on Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you can. That, that's a big help over here too. So with all of that said and out of the way, I wanted to show you one of my absolute all-time favorite projects. And I made these as ornaments and I'll show you three different ones. Actually, I made a, a fourth one. I'm just not crazy about the fourth one, but I will show you how I did one of these and you can follow these instructions on any shell that you would like to make. So you can see I decoupaged the front and I added some bling on the inside of these and I also, as you can tell, added a lot of gems and decorations on the outside and I'll show you the simple way that I drilled these, uh, drilled a hole in them also. So in today's video I'm going to focus on this shell but this goes for any shell and any napkin and any gems that you would like to use. All of the same instructions and the same materials apply. So here's what I did in order to get this started. For this particular shell, on the outside, I used this Krylon Metallic Brilliant Gold. You want to make sure it says Brilliant on the label. You can also use this Bin Primer. It's shellac based over the shells where you would just like a white background like this one. You can see that this is this has a spray paint coating on it inside and out, but that is using the Bin Shellac Primer. Now I specifically went with these spray paints, but there are a couple of reasons for that. One is if you are giving these away, or even if you're going to just use them year after year, nothing holds up like these spray paints do. There are polymers in there that really bond to these shells. If you want to use chalk paint, I still suggest you use the bin primer first, let that dry, and then add the chalk paint over it. You could also use acrylic paint over that. So on this shell, you'll notice that I spray painted the outside with the gold and got a little on my fingers. And the inside, I just used the B-I-N, the bin shellac. What I did was I wanted to take the part of the napkin that I wanted to use and instead of working with the whole napkin, I just cut out this quarter that I needed. I then separated the napkin. Just dampen your fingers and go to each corner and press and pull the napkin away. And now I wanted to make sure this fit in here where I wanted the, the specific images that I wanted to show up. So here's a trick with these napkins. Don't apply the decoupage glue on the inside. Instead, Take a small artist's paintbrush like this one, and it's really important to use napkin decoupage glue. And take some of that, actually you want to take a lot of it up on your brush, so really load your brush up. You can see how much I have there. Now the napkin is dry, the shell is dry, and what you want to do is First of all, put the napkin decoupage glue down up there at the top where you have that steep curve. And from the center out, pull the brush out. Now because this is napkin decoupage glue, it's going right through the napkin and it's going right down onto the shell and you're actually avoiding wrinkles this way. If you were to put the decoupage glue down first, that could cause some wrinkles. When you do it this way, you just avoid the wrinkles. And I'm even going up here over the top and I'm kind of painting the napkin right into the shell. By the way, one thing that I always like to mention is when you get to the ends down here, you wanna make sure you really get a lot of decoupage glue down there. Sometimes if you're just going along, you 
kind of pull, pull the brush up a little bit so that there's such light pressure down there that you can have loose ends. So I'm just going to go around the rest of the inside of this shell and paint the napkin in here and I'll show you how this looks. So now that I'm done with the decoupage glue, you can see that this is still wet. So I'm going to put it aside to dry. Don't worry about pulling away these edges yet. We want this to dry first. And just as another security measure, I'm going around these edges to make sure that they're all secured down with the decoupage glue. And now that the shell has completely dried, I'm going to take a nail file and go all around these edges. If you have any type of sandpaper or a sanding block, you just want to use a medium grit and make sure you file in one direction so that you don't pull your napkin away at all. Even on a microscopic level, you might not be able to see it, but if you go back and forth in a zigzag manner, just like with fingernails, you you can make the edges jagged. So just make sure you're going in one direction and pull all of that excess paper away. And make sure you brush away any of the filings that are left inside. And I'm now taking triple thick glaze and I'm going to coat the whole inside with this because I want a very high gloss. You can also use a Liquitex matte varnish on this. You can use a satin varnish. You do want to make sure that you put some type of a protective coating over your decoupage. There are several videos on YouTube that tell you how to drill holes through shells. And I have one of these smaller electrical drills. And this is the one that I used. And I just used the bit size that I wanted, put this through here, and it did take a full two minutes. You want to let the drill do the work. This is a miniature Dremel, and I tried using the Dremel, which also worked, but for some reason I just preferred using that drill, and that's a drill that I got from the craft store, so no hardware store with the big bulky stuff or big strong hands. <laughs> I wanted something a little more delicate. And you can practice on other shells first, that's really a good idea, and remember to let the drill do the work. And by that I mean turn the drill on, leave the bit in there, and don't press down or force it. Just allow the drill to keep going until it goes through. By the way, I did drill from the inside of the shell out. So not this, this is the back side. I went through the front side and drilled that way. It just made it easier for me. Now we want to take our trim. Now you can find these in the wedding section of the craft store. Uh, you can also find them in stores like Joanne. Now these things get really expensive. I have a website. It's been taking me hours to put the website together every week, but I've been doing this for years and not that many people go through my website. So I'm considering closing the website down because it takes so much time to do it and not that many people are using the website. Now I go through Amazon, so if you've got Amazon Prime, you get all the free shipping, you get the great costs, because if you try to get something like this in say Joanne Fabric, it's going to cost you three to four times more there, sometimes even with the coupon. So let me know with some feedback guys if you want me to keep that website open or if it doesn't matter or even tell me why you really don't like to use the website and uh, i may base my decision on that because i'm just doing it for you guys if it's not necessary then i won't do it so here's the e6000 and here's what i did i found that once i took this bamboo skewer i broke it in half once I took the bamboo skewer, it made it a lot easier to apply this E6000. Number one, you want to make sure you're using E6000. If you use a hot glue gun, a craft glue, anything else other than E6000, you run the risk of these falling apart. This part in particular, it's a little bit time consuming, but I found it to be incredibly relaxing, especially with the way the shell looked when I was done. 
So what I'm doing is I'm using this bamboo skewer, the pointed tip, and I'm going inside the grooves of the shell, and I'm working on two grooves at a time. Now, this shell, I wanted to do a combination of pearls and of the crystals that I have on the spool. So the first row here is pearls, the next row is crystals, then the next row is pearls. I'll show you what I mean. And by the way, it was a lot easier for me to leave some excess up at the top and a little at the bottom. You always want to have a little bit more than you need rather than not enough when you're working with these gems. And something else that I learned the stick that I was using kept getting really tacky. So what I took, uh, what I did was I took a baby wipe and I just kept wiping this tip of the stick or toothpick, whatever you're using. I just kept wiping that off and it still worked great to go back in and apply the E6000. And now that I'm all done, I went around the edges and I carefully clipped away any of that excess. You do want to make sure this is dried first. The E6000 takes a little time to dry. Every time I use my hands there, that is my international symbol for let this dry. <laughs> so I'm going to let this dry a little bit longer, and then I'm going to come back in and go around these edges and cut away that excess from the top and the bottom. And by the way, up at the top of the shell here, right there where the hole is, I wanted to make sure that I didn't cover that with any of the gems. Now here is a different shell that I worked on where I just strictly used all of the crystals. And on the inside, I used a napkin that was black and white. And I said to my husband, doesn't this have a more masculine look? And he kind of laughed, so I meant that it's not all flowery. So if you prefer something that doesn't have all of the flowers, you could possibly use the damask. I put this vintage looking coat button on the inside that's very fiery. There's also a snowflake on the inside of there that's got a lot of glitter to it also. And with the hole up at the top here, what I did was I just took some bead and jewelry stretch cord so that I would be able to hang it. You can also fit very thin ribbon through here if that's something that you would like to do. So now that my shells are done, I'll show you how they all look. And I tried to put them in the right light so that you can really get the idea for how glittery and beautiful these are. These were one of my absolute favorite projects to do. I hope you like this as much as I did. I also want to let you know I have been collecting napkins for probably 15 to 20 years. So sometimes people write to me and say, I have to have that napkin. And I apologize, but I can't always tell you the best place to get the napkins. I try to have them on my website. I'll put a link below. This is the shell that I wasn't that crazy about. And it's only because I put that large gem in the center first. I should have actually just used now, these are, by the way, these adhesive gems that you can get in the craft store. And I put some of those around there. And on this shell, I did the decoupage on the back and put a lot of glitter on there. For the holidays, I really, actually, year-round, I love a lot of bling and glitter. So here is the shell that we worked on today with the gold and the pearls and the gems. And this is how the back of it looks. And then the inside, of course, has our decoupage in there. And you can see how very, very shiny this is. This is completely dry. That's the triple thick that does that. And very happy with the gold shell. On this shell, this is where I just used the Zinser Bin Shellac on it. And then I put the gems on it. Now on the inside, I went with a more typically Christmas theme and added some gems to the inside of this one also. And here's the one where I put the jewelry cord, the shell, so that I'm able to hang it. 
I'm just showing you how the two of them look side by side. They've got two totally different looks, but both of them are very elegant, would make lovely gifts, or you can hang them on your tree, or if you'd like, you'd really, I like to hang these in a place where they just stand out on their own. And here's how the inside of this one looked. And then the outside is where I use the brilliant metallic spray paint. And that is my video for the week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing and staying with me. I am really trying to work this out with YouTube. I'm in contact with them. I know they are trying to do the right thing also. So let's hope that we can get this worked out. I am also on Facebook, Upcycle with Decoupage. If you head on over and like and follow the page, You'll be notified every week when I put new videos out, whether it is on YouTube or Patreon. Plus, I'll also keep you abreast of some new things that I'm working on this year that I'm very excited about. Also, if you've got anything you'd like to suggest about the website or what might help, as long as you're polite, it's, it's really nice to hear from you. If you've got anything constructive, um, please be polite and let me know. I'd be happy to work with you. I am thinking that the website, it, it's just so much extra work and it's... If no one's using it or not that many people are using it, I won't, I won't keep it up there. I watch YouTube videos myself and sometimes I think, where did they get these supplies? Where do they get these products? I would rather get them all in one place. So that was my idea behind putting the website together. Plus, while you're on Amazon, you can do all of your other shopping while you're on my site. You don't have to leave it and go back. So maybe you weren't aware of that. Let me know. Uh, on Facebook or here below in the comments what you think about that, okay? Uh, by the way, I did get these shells from Amazon. They're baking shells, so there were four of them. If, if you go to the craft store, a lot of times they have the very the small seashells. You can work on those also, but it was much easier to work on the larger ones. You could do a whole tree with these and that would be beautiful. If you're lucky enough to live near the coast, then you don't even have to worry about the craft stores. <laughs> I'm only about an hour away from the coast, but uh, I still had to get these from Amazon. It's a little chilly out here right now to be walking on the beach, especially putting your hands in the water. So thank you again, my friends. I'm so excited to be putting a video on YouTube this week. I think I will probably see you next week, uh, if not the week after that. Patreon, if you want to come over and join me over there. I am also putting videos up on Patreon. And I'll put the link to that right below so that it takes you directly to my page. And if you'd like, you can post pictures of your work over on my Upcycle with Decoupage Facebook page. Okay, guys, this was a lot of fun. I'll see you next week, hopefully. Thanks again. Bye-bye.